Hey, welcome to Maximum Bath Speed. I want to do a video today on proper rotation or maximum rotation through the ball. How do you achieve that and what you should do and what you should not do in order for you to be able to maximize your swing to the full potential. So let's get started here. Now, these two players right here are pretty much synced up. And I'm going to show you what's going on here uh, with both these players, okay? And both these players have pretty good, uh, really good mechanics here. I really like a lot of what they're doing. So watch what's going on right here. They both transfer their weight. They get into their toe touch. And you're going to see here that both these players right here, as they start to get into their rotation, they're both going to hit off a of front axis, okay? And what they're doing here, as they're getting into their heel plant, they're allowing their back of their back of their foot to release in order to get to a front axis, okay? Now, in order to get to a front axis correctly, you must release the back foot or you must release the hips. And what do I mean by a front axis? Now, you can see right here with both, both these players right here, if I draw a line from the foot going down to the logo, okay, what you see with an elite players is that you'll see that from the going straight up like this, you're going to see from the logo on the head, okay? So I'll just kind of show you what's going on here from the logo to the belt buckle, okay? And this is not quite direct outside batter's box, you, but you're going to get a good idea what I'm talking about here. You're going to see again from the top of the logo, from the belt buckle, all right, from the bottom of the foot, it's going to be pretty much all one straight line, okay? And what this allows for a player to do is as they start to get into their swing, their body's going to be able to rotate, okay? Rotate off that front axis. So in other words, their body's going to be able to have a pure rotation going off that front line that I just drew there, okay? Now what happens to a lot of players when they don't get to this front axis, to this front side one axis, they end up having what's kind of a look that looks more like this, and I'll just draw it for you again. Like I just said, you want to have a, a maximize your rotation. Players want to hit off a front axis. A lot of players, what they do is when they swing, they have kind of a look like this when they're swinging. They're, they're up here from the logo to the belt buckle, and then they have their foot down here like this instead of having a pure rotation like you see with this player on the right and what you see with the player on the left, okay? So in other words, this particular axis right here on what I'm drawing right here on the left, this is correct, okay? And the bottom one on the one on the right is incorrect, okay? Now let me explain to you what happens when you get this particular look like this, okay? What I call kind of a jackknife kind of a look, okay? Now, we're going to go back to the beginning of the video right here again where, where we started here. What was going on with both these players right here? They, they start to get into their heel plan. Now, watch what's going on right here. This is very important for you coaches out there who teach keeping your foot back. And this is why I totally advocate against not allowing your back foot to stay planted. Now, watch what happens right here. Now, both these players right here are pretty much at toe touch. A lot of these players that play at high levels, they do a very good job of getting at a pretty good toe touch. In other words, like what I talk about in my Build Your Swing Plan video, they get about 60% of their height right here, okay? And you can see with both these players right here, they do a very good job. Even players that keep their foot back foot planted do a pretty good job of getting to about 60% of their height and many players in college. But what happens is this. Now, if we just use the player on the left for an example. Now, if the player was to leave her back foot right there, okay, just say she, could, she did not release it, okay, and we'll just go ahead and put a little circle right here where her back foot is right here. Now, if she just left her foot back there and she was just starting to rotate, okay, what would happen is her body would stay back. So notice how her back foot has released as she gets into the contact. So her foot went from where it was to over here, okay? Meaning that what she did is she allowed her back foot to release. Now watch the player on the right, did the same thing. Now if we were to just draw a circle right here, same thing with the player right here where her toe is right there. And you can see here what's going on with this player. Now this video is moving right here, so I'm just going to take this little circle off. But just mark a spot right there where her foot, as you can see, it's very obvious that her foot moved up from where it was back here, okay, to now where her foot is over here. So the same process took place from the player on the left 
where she started back here and she released it where her foot advanced, okay? Now, the reason why you must release the foot is because this allows the hips to square up. This is what gives you that front axis, okay? Because again, if you, do, if you leave your foot back like this and you just start to rotate, that's what creates that, what I said, that kind of that jackknife look like this, okay? Because what happens is your upper body kind of stays back because your hips stay closed like this instead of squaring up. So for those of you parents out there that have kids or have children or players or coaches that are working with players, you're wondering why they have this kind of a jackknife look and they're not hitting off a front axis like you see these both elite players, like the way you should have a swing, again, to maximize your rotation through the ball where everything is pretty much where you're hitting off a front axis again, where the logo, the belt buckle, and the bottom of the foot is all pretty much one straight line. You see this in MLB players all all the time. You see it in some very few softball players and it's not something that I see enough of in D1 softball. I don't see it enough in softball period and again the reason why is because players leave their foot planted back, okay? You do not want to leave your foot planted back because if you leave your foot planted back, it's going to give you that jackknife look, okay? So, what do you do in order to release that back foot? Well, to do that correctly, what you should do is keep that instep pressure, okay? Keep instep pressure in your back leg, your back foot, inside of your ankle, and by doing so, and that's going to allow you to transfer your weight correctly. Now, when you do that with that pressure being where I mentioned, and you land about 60% of your height, the momentum of everything being inside, okay, inside of the inner thigh, the inner leg, okay, everything inside, everything inside of the inner thigh, inner leg, is going to allow you to push everything kind of in this manner this manner going this way so that when you get into your heel plant what it's going to allow you to do is going to allow you to have tremendous force so that your back hip catches up well your back pelvis catches up to the front one therefore squaring up your hips to the pitcher giving you tremendous tremendous back speed with the lower body therefore the upper body if you have the proper mechanic is going to allow you to get to the front axis now, if you want more detail about this, I have a build your swing plan on my website. I also do online analysis. I can get, uh, give you very deep details, very in-depth details about what I teach and how to maximize your swing to the full potential. I also have bonus videos. Give me a like if you learned something. Thank you for watching my channel.